um, like we talked about. So um, I'm just gonna very quickly just turn it over to Corey. Corey owns his own photography business, um, CLE Photography, yep. and uh, right here in Duluth, and has been in business for about six years. And he's gonna talk to you guys about marketing um, from a realistic point of view, right? We've been talking a lot about the different concepts, and we've broken down a lot of really big companies like on Monday, right? But he's gonna talk about what it's like in real life in a smaller business right here locally, um, what works for him, and just kind of show you some of what he's been doing that's been successful or interesting in both. So Corey, come on up. All and right. you guys, don't forget to write down your three questions as we go so we can turn them in at the end and maybe Corey can answer some of those as well. Absolutely. How you doing, everybody? You all look very excited and and enthusiastic for learning today for the next 50 minutes here. Um, let's, uh, so let's, let's move right on to the uh, presentation here. There we go. All right. So thank you very much, Jen Garland. Yes, my name is uh, Corey Lehman. Uh, I started CLE Photography. CLE stands for Corey Lehman Enterprises. Uh, I thought of that name as a joke when I was uh, in college, just like yourselves. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more details about that. Um, so a, a little bit about me and my academic career. In 2013, uh, I, got an a I started my education for an AA degree at Lake Superior College, uh, Associates in Arts degree. And in tandem with that, I also got a Media Studies and Production Certificate uh, from the same place. And I graduated in uh, 2015. After LSC, I moved on to the College of St. Scholastica. Um, I got a scholarship there and was lucky enough to go there um, for a reduced price. I know tuition is pretty heavy. Um, and that's a huge reason why I went to the private school in town here. Uh, but I got a BA in communications, media relations, uh, just last year. Um, so it's still, it's still fresh on the mind there. A um, little bit of my experience. Um, I have lots and lots of experience uh, working with cameras of all kinds, camera lenses, uh, you know, different types of uh, camera formats and, and other types of things. These are two major types of uh, camera formats. This is a sports camera that you might see in a Madden or not a Madden, but uh, NFL football game, or a camcorder that a documentary filmmaker might use. So there's lots of different types of cameras. Um, I do a lot of freelance work outside of my business, so I see a lot of different types of cameras like that. So a quick overview, overview of my business. Um, I've run the, my multimedia business for over six years. Um, by multimedia, I mean video production, audio production, and photography and on top of that there's other things that could be tossed in uh, with the Adobe uh, Creative Suite is what I use most but these are also some of the brands that sort of define um, my business and some of the brands I depend on the most like I said I started with the name uh, Corey Lehman Enterprises as a joke uh, in college and it quickly grew to something I you know shared with friends and, and family and um, it kind of picked up with, hey, can you, can you shoot uh, my graduation pictures or shoot some portrait photos for me? And, uh, and it was just a matter of saying, yeah, sure, and, and just kind of figuring it out from there. Uh, so family is a great tool to figure out how to get uh, good at, at what you're interested in. Um, so I started doing interviews, uh, making small commercials for local businesses, and generally looking for work outside of classes. Uh, that included uh, working backstage for major produc uh, band productions that came in the town that would play at the Deck or the Bayfront Festival, just uh, lots of events happening in the summer there. So on to uh, marketing, uh, precisely what marketing is, and I'm sure this is review for most of you. Marketing is the process of planning and executing the conception pricing, promotion, and distribution of ideas, goods, and services to create <coughs> exchanges that satisfy individual and organizational goals. So 
So with that in mind, in the overview of my business, I ask you guys a question. Uh, and I, I phrase it in a way that you can ask yourself this question. And if you look at this question and kind of apply it to your interest or your brand or your business eventually, or maybe today, I've heard there's photographers in the room, uh, fellow photographers, um, is this question, how can a client see how great my work is? And there's lots of um, ideas about how to do that, just thinking from the outside looking in. Um, one of the first things that, that uh, budding photographers specifically go to, or filmmakers, they say the best gear. I want a Red Dragon camera, I want a Canon 5D or a Sony uh, A7R2, or really high-end, really expensive cameras, um, the best equipment out there. Or the best skills. Uh, skills. <clears throat> That could be ed education from industry leaders, internships under professionals already working in the field, uh, and just gaining the best insight and the best experience under somebody who is already working in the field. Um, here's one that's a little bit more relevant to our time. Uh, the, the best website, um, gaining the best website, or spending 10 minutes on Wix.com and making your website and, and celebrating your your business online, or um, also the best customer service, and always making sure that your customer is satisfied, your client is satisfied. The answer is all of the above, and also the client's eyeball. Uh, my business depends on a client-vendor uh, relationship, which is very reliant upon an art form, which is photography, and what the client wants specifically out of their product that they are purchasing from myself. And it comes down to what they see in the photos that I give them. It's a matter of their perception and what they see out of the photos that, that I, I take of themselves. So let's take a look at some values that I base my business on. The number one thing for my business is efficiency. I want to make sure that I show up to uh, a client photo shoot with the best equipment. I want to have a solid plan. And I want to make sure that if I'm outside shooting or shooting a big family or something like that, I want to make sure that I have a good plan for, uh, you know, kind of look at the space where we're shooting first um, and kind of think about uh, places where I can shoot this, this group of people or a single person and find the best possible way to, to make the best of, of their experience, uh, getting what I offer as a service. Next best thing I'd say equally is important for myself is transparency. I make it absolutely clear that um, with my clients, they know exactly what they are getting. And I go the extra mile with transparency and explaining exactly what will be happening, how the photos will be getting to them. And in most cases, I will actually send them the photos I take um, pre-edited. I do edit all my photos and make sure they look as, as good as they possibly can. But I do send them uh, photos unedited as well. And that leads to customer satisfaction. And these three things, <coughs> go together, they have sort of a synergistic appeal because customer satisfaction is the most important thing. And transparency and efficiency kind of go underneath that to prop up uh, satisfaction. So a little bit more into the back end, kind of a little bit of the nitty gritty stuff of, of my business, uh, the financial aspect of photography. It usually starts with a large investment, like I mentioned. Um, decent gear, some sort of equipment that you can start out with. So it typically starts out with a large investment into equipment or skills, uh, such as college experience. Uh, photography, in my experience, is a, is a technology business, which means that most photo processing depends on computers, which actually, is, uh, computers are, you know, they're, they're such a mainstay. Every, every one of you has a computer in your pocket, uh, most likely, except for the the older gentleman there probably still does. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
But uh, maintaining computer, computers and cameras and other equipment is overall easy to afford. Um, it costs next to nothing to store my tripod somewhere uh, until the next gig. Um, but there is one catch though. As technology adapts and doubles in power, uh, computer strength doubles in power every six months. Um, and so it is really important to upgrade uh, consistently. And that is the nature of photography and the nature of the technology business is you really are at the mercy of computer power. Um, I just upgraded from uh, a computer I bought in 2014 uh, for about $1,100. And uh, it was getting slow. It was starting to get bogged down. That was in 2013. And I bought this new computer just last year. And um, the, the, the change is massive. Um, and this computer was actually a little bit uh, uh, cheaper. And I'd say about four times as powerful. Um, it really is uh, amazing that uh, the technology is advancing so quickly. So a little bit about the upkeep, um, the consistent charges, whether I get work or not. Number one is the Adobe Creative Suite, is what I use for Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, <clears throat> editing programs like Premiere, and uh, audio editing like Audition. Um, so that's $35 a month, whether I get work or not. Uh, lens cleaner, of course. I have to make sure my lenses are clean and, and in a good uh, place to, you know, I don't want to take any photos that have specs or things like that on them. It just takes away from my efficiency. It takes more time to edit that stuff out and after I take the photos. Uh, and then business cards. Um, I just printed some business cards three months ago, so that's a very recent figure, uh, and I, I ran out. I printed 100 of them, and, uh, and it ran out. I'm sure there's ways to print 1,000 of them, but I kind of have this complex about uh, if I print 1,000 of them, my number might change, or something might change on these cards that will make them irrelevant. So I, I try to not print too many at one time. And then my marketing budget is about $120 a year. And I really make sure, you might notice that these costs are pretty low. Um, and it really is important to make sure your costs are low, especially as a sole proprietorship, which is what uh, my business is specifically. Uh, so my marketing budget <clears throat> isn't really reliant on creating organic um, promotions or buying ads or anything like that. It really is more of a passive way of purchasing a, gallery, a premium version of a gallery membership and the domain on, on my website. Um, and those are two sort of passive things that don't really work for me unless I'm consistently sharing links from these gal this gallery uh, websites and my main website. And, uh, and that keeps costs down. So logistically speaking, <clears throat> when I uh, create um, or when I, when I foster a relationship with a client and they want to uh, purchase my services, I make sure, let's see, this is actually the wrong slide. One sec. Yeah, so logistically speaking, um, make sure my camera equipment is stored in a, in a, in a nice, cool, dry place. Um, fun fact, camera lenses can actually grow fungus um, I didn't know that until two years ago. I, it wasn't based on experience, but I, I read about it and realized that that's the thing that actually happens. So um, it happens to any sort of uh, the type of glass that's used, a, a spherical glass that's used in lenses can actually grow fungus if it's stored kind of outdoors or in a, in a sort of moist place or a, a, a wet place um, or a, a humid place. Uh, it will definitely uh, gather some some fungus there and that renders the lens unusable um, so that would take away from from my upkeep is if I have to buy new lenses so I have to make sure I have to store my lenses in a nice cool dry place uh, <clears throat> okay so the the workflow specifically um, step one I, I make I gather a relationship with a client they either approach me or I approach them with a business card or meet them somewhere, and they happen to say that they need a, 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 a graduation photo or a, you know, a business photo or a, or a headshot or something 
of that nature. Um, once I do that on my side, I designate the equipment needed. Um, I go to the photo shoot appointment. I conduct the photo shoot to the best of my ability. And as soon as I'm done, I take the files on my camera, I, I move them to my computer, and then I go through them. And I can take anywhere from, from about 600 to 1,000 photos per uh, photo session. Um, and I really make sure that I get the best possible uh, photos before any editing. And then once I see the best photos, based on my own perception, not necessarily the client's perception, uh, they will see or I will, I will find the, you know, the best looking photos. And then they will make them look as good as they possibly can. And then once that's done, my next process, you guys all knew about cloud, you know, cloud drives, right? Google Drive and Dropbox and things like that. So this can be used with any of those. Uh, what I do is I upload the files to Google Drive, um, the edited photos and the uh, raw photos. And what I do is I, send out an email to the client saying, okay, your photos are done and ready. The best photos are already edited uh, from my perspective. But in addition, you can look at the unedited photos and pick out the file names and ask for those photos to be edited. So I really leave it open and collaborative with the client and make sure that we're on the same playing field communicatively and make sure that we are collaborating as a team to make uh, their experience the best possible that they can. Um, there have been a few instances where I may be looking at, let's see, there may be a few instances where I'm looking at um, uh, a photo in the more technical aspects. I'm looking where the focus point is. I'm looking where highlights are if they're burnt out or whether or not I can, I can bring them back in. I'm looking at framing. I'm looking at how, I, how can I make this photo look as good as I possibly can. And the client, may, my, in most cases, is not looking at that. They are looking at, typically, in most cases, themselves or their family pictures or things like that. And they'll just like a photo for the nature of the photo. And all the, all the things that I bring to the table in terms of taking a photo uh, may not be the focus of some of the photos that they, they like. Um, so it really is important not to uh, tell a client what they want. Um, it's important to make sure that you really keep that playing field even and not sort of claim a, a, a sort of justification to, to you sort of knowing more than they do. Um, so as I said, solid communication is really essential to maintaining my business. Um, in my experience, face-to-face uh, -face interaction and word of mouth is the best form of business generation. Um, and I choose to approach marketing as a personable brand instead of commercial, which entails having minimum indirect ways to contact me. Um, so what that basically means uh, in layman's terms is uh, the contact form if you've ever been on a photographer's website or a photography website of any kind, there, there might be a way to contact this person, but it's in a contact form. You enter your name, your email, and what you want, and you send it off, and there's, you have no idea when you'll be getting a reply back. And in some cases, uh, a client may want services maybe 48, maybe 72 hours before uh, they actually need the photos done and delivered to them. Um, so I really try to keep uh, my approach, if I'm not there in person, as personable as possible. So these slides are just a tad mixed up, but as I was saying uh, in my perception of things, uh, I'm looking at the focus point, framing, rule of thirds, highlight, uh, detail, where to crop if needed, and how much tweaking of colors is needed. And the client may be looking for their favorite photo um, with little to no insight into what a good photo is according to myself in the perspective that, that I've, I've learned through experience and, and knowledge. Uh, hence, the client chooses their favorites or that at least they get the chance to choose their favorites 
in addition to the best photos. Um, most cases, I'm saving the client from themselves. I'm picking the best photos possible and delivering those to them first uh, and making sure that they have the chance to choose their favorite photos as well. So moving on to a little bit of feedback. Um, this, is my, this is one of the, my um, vendor websites. It's called uh, Thumbtack. Uh, I'm no longer an active member on here, but these are some of the interviews, or I mean uh, reviews, that I got from clients that I've worked with, uh, except for this one. That's, uh, that's my girlfriend there. He, uh, she, uh, she, she's very generous and, and likes to assert herself and, and things like this. So. Um, but all the others um, are people I, I've worked with personally, and they, they all have, uh, have, have given their ratings there. So a little bit about organic uh, promotion just to touch on. Um, this is a, a page I run just for fun to get good at, uh, or, or to at least learn a little bit about organic promotion through experience. So I run a, a video gaming page and you can see here, uh, gaming community, I named this community. And I looked at the, uh, the demographic, which is the age range. And then this is through facebook.com. I looked at different things that a potential customer or poten uh, potential uh, follower of a page like this might be interested in. Um, so that could be anything from people who like uh, PlayStation 3 or uh, different video games or things like that. Um, so this is an organic way to market. And the reason I, only ha I, I don't have much to go on on this is uh, because I don't typically market organically. But this is one example of uh, a way to market organically. And through uh, Facebook and using this to promote your brand is, is through uh, boosting your, your page or your uh, posts specifically. And uh, the people who match and those categories des designated, you can tell are very, very uh, particular. And then they're all grouped into one sort of community. Um, so that's one way you can take an approach to your business if you want to market organically. You can designate your own uh, demographic very, very precisely on uh, Facebook. All right, I'm gonna take a drink of coffee. Any questions so far? No? So we're gonna take a look at uh, some fun stuff. Take a look at some stuff that um, that's not quite as monotone and, and boring here. Um, there we go, okay. So I'll just cruise down here a little bit. These, this is my, ga <coughs> excuse me. This is my gallery for some of my best photos. Um, you can tell here that these are not photos for clients. These are photos that I've taken out of interest. Um, as you can tell, I, I like to go out. I like to take photos um, just for the sake of taking photos. Uh, there's some zoo uh, photos there. Um, I'm sure you may recognize a, a, a gallery such as this, um, Instagram and other social websites have galleries just like this. Uh, but uh, these are some of the photos for CLE photography and photos that, that I've taken here. Uh, this series right here is from uh, Grand, Grand Portage, uh, uh, upstate, some cityscapes, um, and it, it, uh, these photos are wonderfully and wildly uh, unorganized, uh, which is um, which isn't a bad thing because this is more of a more of an expression of what I like to do with my photography, and where it you know where it becomes fun is in you know, sharing the photos that I really want to, want to share. There's, there's a, hundreds of photos. You guys can, are, are welcome to, to take a look later. 
Um, let's see. So there is sound for this one. So a um, little bit about this video, real quick. Um, Corey's Big Picture Show. Uh, what I did is I had a question about um, trying to show to people and potential clients and folks who just want to know what I'm, what I'm doing or what I'm up to <coughs> is how can I show them all of these photos that I've taken? How can I show them that this is my main interest, this is what I really want to do? Um, and really show them all the photos and, and things that I've seen and things that I've, that I've, uh, I, I've worked with uh, in the easiest and quickest and, and, and best digestible way possible. And um, this, so this is, a, this is an innovative way. It's sort of a slideshow, but it's uh, sped up. Um, so I'll let you guys take a look at this video here real quick.
So uh, any questions? And thank you guys for watching that. Yeah, so what kinds of questions did you guys have listening? I heard a lot of different marketing techniques here, right? So we've got the slideshow, which is really, you, you start to get drawn in. To me, that kind of evoked a feeling, right, with the music, and, and that's an important component of marketing. The yeah. book that you guys are passing around, something tangible that you can hold. Um, the personal promotion, right, the word of mouth, the reviews, um, the website, the gallery online, mm -hmm. so, and then you have an actual physical mm -hmm. gallery show coming up, and so mm -hmm. lots of different types of marketing, right, that we can see illustrated here, all by one sole proprietorship, small business. It's just, it's incredibly complex what we can do. So how about some of the questions that you wrote down as you were listening? Who would like to ask some questions? Okay. Uh, I know that you said like marketing to you is like trying to do a little bit more of uh, in a little bit more personal way, but uh, with the constant updating of technology and the issues, do you find yourself having to remarket your product to better represent your business? Yeah, the, the word I chose was uh, personable uh, to, to start off. And um, yeah, yeah, um, I, I feel that uh, most powerfully. Um, Last year and this year, um, with the inflection of 4K, um, 4K TVs and cameras and things were being given out, um, I think, three or four years ago uh, now, probably longer. But, uh, but just this year and last year, it's really become um, sort of a, a larger marketing campaign from larger um, uh, manufacturers, so such as Samsung, or GoPro or other brands that are marketing 4K as the next best thing, um, I have to adapt to that and respond to customers who are asking for that. Um, so definitely, definitely. Um, that's a big part of, of, of marketing, especially uh, uh, as a sole proprietorship that I am, is um, a lot of what I have to adapt to is what the bigger companies are marketing for because I have obviously a much bigger reach and they're really good at telling people uh, what the best thing is. Yeah. So is it, does that answer your question? Cool. Let me find that one over here. Yeah. How did you end your website? Like photography was your niche, and like, how did you like, how did you plan on starting the like, theater door business? What did you like uh, go with the people who say like uh, you have to work for all the to start the business that will work for all the you mean working for somebody else? Uh, when you work for somebody else, and you decided to do business and run the business, what did you decide to do photography? Uh, besides photography, I also do uh, video production. Um, filmmaking uh, is a big part. Um, I do a lot of, um, I guess, more generic production work. Uh, for example, um, there's a business in town called Audiovisual Resources. Um, I worked for, that, for them for a couple of years. And what they do is they work with uh, bigger clients and, and uh, corporations that come through um, to a couple different venues, the Deck, uh, Gray Salon Ballroom, a couple other places. And what they make, the, what their bread and butter is, is screens and projectors uh, and some light microphone uh, audio stuff. And so where a lot of the uh, consistent money is, the more the consistent things that uh, larger clients are paying for is a place to, just like this, like a classroom, uh, a screen and a projector to ha hold a corporate meeting or have an event or something of that, or an award ceremony or something like that. All of that gear typically around here is, is shepherded in by, a, by AVR. Um, and so that's what I mainly do is I work with them um, and I work in that sort of vein of production. It is, it's, it's a lot of just moving stuff around, wrapping up cables and things like that. To why work for yourself as opposed to working for someone else, right? Were you asking why start your own business as opposed to working for Yeah, and take on all of these responsibilities. Um Yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to sound generic. My my first thought is is I like a challenge, but that, that might be too general. Um I, I felt like I had something to add to photography. I felt like um not to put myself ahead of others, but to just, a, just apply myself to something uh, 100%.
I felt the easiest way to do that was to create my own business um, and, and really build it from the ground up. Um, lots of regular jobs uh, that I've had, still have a regular day job, of course. Um, but when, when you have 100% control over something, it really makes it terrifying and amazing at the same time. Um, and uh, I, I'd say the, the best reason why I started working for myself is because, uh, like I said, it, it's, it's having that, that full control over, over this sort of enterprise. Thanks. Yeah. The neighbor, the friendly neighbor. Yeah. Across the street, it's their mom. So I don't know if you still yes. remember that. Yeah. Um, so first, just a caveat. I got my associates in arts and graphics and photography, and I got tens of thousands of images from all over the world. Awesome. Have you had any luck promoting your personal portfolio? And the second part of my question is, do you use things like peer review for to weed out quality and to make sure that the product, you know, weed out the sentiment, the sentimentality of photography, and focus on the quality of photography. That's that's amazing. I love that question because that's that's definitely based on you know from a photographer to another photographer. Um, yeah, there's there's um, I'm a part of a lot of different groups on on Facebook specifically. Um, lots of different groups on there where folks from all over the world post absolutely mind blowing photography. Um, it's it's almost it's it's unbelievable, um, and a lot of it's uh, not photoshopped in a way. Like for example, it'll be like a like a bird catching a a bug in midair, and there's a lightning strike behind it. It's just amazing photography, amazing. Um, and I use that I use that, and sort of what I do is I I I like to look at photographers that I really like. Um, I try to find photographers and I say, this is, this is a great photograph and figure out why that is. Um, and from there and just kind of flood my, my perception with amazing photos. And what I get from that is when I'm out looking for photos, looking for photos to take, um, looking for photo opportunities, I, I use what I've seen um, and apply that directly to what the photos I'm taking. And so... Uh, what it's done is I've, I've naturally sort of um, seen a glass ceiling of the best possible photos out there, and I'm just trying to reach towards that. And so it, to get rid of sentimentality and do peer review, it's great to be a part of a group and regularly upload. Um, it's great to get your photos seen. Uh, it's a great feeling. Um, there's about 8,000 photos in that, in that video, uh, one, uh, one photo per frame, and it was 30 frames a second about nine minutes. Um, so it was a lot, a lot of photos. Um, and those were not my best photos, but they were all of the photos I took in each individual session. Um, so it's a great way to, in my view, to say, hey, look how many photos I've taken. Here's, a, here's a, you know, it kind of tells a story too, in my feeling, but uh, Facebook groups, super important. Um, and uh, uploading uploading photos is, uh, um, to, to a group that talks about, looks at, and asks about photography regularly. You know, finding your people that way um, is really important. And does that answer your question? I think so. Okay. Yeah. 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 How, how are you planning to, like, uh, find your business? Is there any, like, marketing strategy or anything you use to do it, like, have your brand? Yeah, so in terms of expansion, uh, that's a great question. Um, in terms of expansion, um, keeping on the personable role, keeping on the, um, if you send me a message on Facebook or email or something like that, I'll respond immediately. There's no contact form or, you know, an 800 number or anything like that. It's my direct number to me um, to create an appointment. Um, and how I aim to expand that is um, coming up in October, uh, at Wasau's Coffee Shop, I'll be holding a gallery, photographic gallery, um, of uh, a, a lot of the photos in that photo book going around. I uh, will be on this gallery in a larger, sort of larger format. Um, so that's how I aim to expand: is to start tabling, start getting more galleries, and being next to my photos when they're when they're being shown. Um, so that's how I aim to to gather more customers and expand. 
Um, do you mean logistically uh, in terms of getting more people or getting more equipment in that way? Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it definitely starts with with having a plan, having a good um, approach to marketing that you're comfortable with. And the, the way I'm most comfortable with is a personable way. And so that's in-person uh, connections. And so a gallery and a reception for that gallery where I'm talking to people. Um, it's happening October 3rd uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, at West Dallas Coffee Shop in West Duluth. Uh, and I'll be there and I'll be talking about photos and I actually may, you may, if you do, uh, everybody's invited, obviously. Uh, and if you want to go there, I'll be showing that actual, that slideshow again. Have you ever thought of like using social media like popular ones, like comments and anything is used as a platform? Yeah, what I, what I mainly rely on is, um, I, I keep it realistic as, as possible. And so I, so the best photos, like I, I like to sell photo prints as well. Um, and the best uh, sales day that I've ever had was recently, and it was approaching people directly and showing them a photo already made, already printed and matted and ready to go and saying, hey, do you like this? Do you want a copy? And I sold more photos than I've ever sold online. Um, so in my personal experience, there isn't a ton of incentive unless there's a lot of momentum behind you to uh, sell online and jump on all these different sites. Um, there's a hundred different websites that um, monetize communication between you and a, and a client. Uh, for example, Thumbtack, um, there's Aperture, there's F-Stop, there's all these different sites that say, we'll find clients for you and connect you with them based on what you do and you just have to pay this fee. Well, there's a lot more communication, a lot more back and forth that happens outside of just, hey, I want this for this much. There's a lot more back and forth. And so those websites can get very pricey. But I think that would be the most direct way um, and a, a sort of more passive uh, page on a major social media site. It's like putting a, you know, a water drop in an ocean. Uh, it really is just a, a massive, massive market. Um, and when I approach people in person uh, and, and they see my photos physically, it makes a much bigger effect. And so that's where I, I, I stick to. But, um, but yeah, definitely a commercial way to do it. To do it. Uh, if, you, if you have $100,000, I'd say, starting out, get on all the websites, uh, hire a marketing team, and, uh, and, and push a, a, as, as hard as you can with organic marketing and other things like that. Um, otherwise, it's, it's a little bit too big for one person to manage all these different sites. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, if you guys have any other follow-up questions that you didn't get to ask today, bring your questions up here and let me know. I can definitely put you in touch with